First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. Begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. You have an activated pipe in which that produced this black chemical called melanin. We, what we did was gave a hard line in the sand between the different definitions of esoteric study and exoteric study. Playtime is over. All right, you back with First World Radio, your host, Dr. Alain Bay. And I'm getting ready to bring on my co-host, Brother L. Fahim, you here, brother? Yes, uh, I tell you, Washington East, Brother Aline. Yeah, I tell you, Washington East, brother. How you doing tonight? Doing very well, brother. How the brother doing? I'm doing good, doing good. Begin ready to get into I'll, the I'll topic of the esoteric meaning behind the movie Purge Anarchy. Now, for anyone who's seen the first movie, um, they didn't really go into population control agenda. All right? Um, mm-hmm. They just went into that. There was a bill in which that was passed in which that authorized that on March 21st, now during the summer, um, during the spring um, equinox, that people had the right to go out and commit homicide right. um, as a day in which that out of all the frustrations and angers disappointments in which they have accumulated over the year. They had the right to go and actually attack and kill the person in which that caused them or they think that caused them to feel that way. Now, that was basically the principle of the first movie. However, when you get into Purge 2, um, the Antiochy, uh, we see a whole different view within the first 10 minutes or so, you see um, the daughter sit down with the grandfather and she states about population control agenda and mm-hmm. how the elite is actually doing that, which is talking about the purge and authorizing the purge as a way to um, to basically to control the population and to eradicate the useless eaters. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's basically what she was telling the grandfather. The grandfather um, somewhat agrees, 
somewhat, but in the next scene or so, you see him going to the this so-called elite party, offering himself as a human sacrifice mm. in order to obtain one hundred thousand dollars in order to be given to his daughter and granddaughter. Mm. All right. Um, that was um, the scenario. But then there's also RBG, which is Red, Black, and Green, the revolutionary Pan-African um, brother in which he's speaking through the TV. And he is stating that we need to um, basically get guns and get our weapons um, and protect ourselves defense, you know, against the so-called elite and them of that build of the purge and basically destroy um you know destroy it you know mm-hmm. and if you go through the rest of the movie they end up getting the elite all right by the end of the movie they end up getting the elite and um purging them um of course you know th- there was something which that was um allowed to go you know but um what that showed is is that um, if you target the right people, you can get your results. Mm-hmm. Right? That's basically what this movie mm-hmm. was showing. You know, so this isn't a movie in which that was just showing, um, just going out and killing someone just for the hell of it. This one had a specific plot in mind. That if you go after the so-called elite, the rich ones, those who are the million and billionaires and et cetera, you know, and target them as they target you by being a lobbyist to pass such bills as the purge or, you know, pass um, bills such as the terrorist bill, pass bills such as the gun law bill or the Brady, you know, bill um, to pass all these, you know, the so-called... Patriot Bill to pass all the bills and the word bill when you look it up in Black Law Dictionary means something of which that is old because it's a bill. A bill, bill. is old when you eat dinner, right? When you eat dinner um, at the end because you ate, you know, now you must pay. Right. So when we get into that um, analyzing of these particular bills or acts on which that has been paid or must be paid, Um, the question is, well, who has to pay for it? And based on the movie, um, it's us, the so-called IE black people. All right, Mm -hmm. now, um, the disappointing thing about the movie was the fact, of course, you know, a white man always have to save um, the black woman in this regard. That that was um, the flaw of it. However, um, the overall battle or war in which that was waged against the elite came by way of um, the brother who was the revolutionary in which that sparked the movement in order to go against them. And he even states that there's more of us than it is of them. Exactly. So that was very interesting in this movie. And I know last week we talked about the movie Lucy and, um, that was interesting about the different compartments of the brain in which that we was breaking down. But um, now, you know, that's for the spiritual side in order to, as you've seen at the end, she became melanin or, you know, a black substance, which is melanin, and then disappeared or became everything, uh, which is symbolic to, like we said last week, the black Madonna, uh, you know, in which that the Catholic Church refers to as the Queen of Heaven, which is the Mother Mary, the Mother of God, uh, which is actually a form of our set. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, it became noon, or noon, all right, or noon, in which that became the um, the primordial waters or the substance of life. In this movie, it dealt more so with the physical, um, technical. Uh, life in which that we're dealing with here. Um, in other words, our so-called life on planet Earth and what can be done if we come together, stick together, and actually devise a defense or a plan against the nine battle fronts as 
Dr. Nellie Fuller, as well as also Frances Quest Wilson, speaks about in her book in particular called The ISIS Papers, where she speaks about these nine battle fronts. She speaks about religion, sex, labor, law, entertainment, politics, um, education, you know, and also we have to add in health as well as also land and others. But these particular battlefronts is something in which that we have to wage war against as far as the elite, which is called the so-called Illuminati, has their tentacles through all these particular various systems. We basically control every facet of our life. So you have to start deconnecting yourself um, by way of denial of corporate status is one of them, which say that you're not the straw man, in mm-hmm. which that by not being the straw man, which is homeostratness or stratomy is homos, in which that Black Law Dictionary speaks about something in which that is of no substance. Just like the straw man had no brain, um, and so therefore um, he was of no substance. The tin man, right. which is the taxpayer identification number, was looking for a heart. So because he didn't have a heart, he was of no substance. So they're telling you that if you use your mind and use your feelings, then you have some substance. Um, in a sense, that can be part of the, you know, when they say that we are three fifths human. Those two things was taken from us, which is our thoughts, um, our proper thoughts, which is our mind, our brain, via, via our brain, as well as also our heart, um, which is dealing with courage and overcoming fear. Um, those things was taken from us, so put us in the category of being a three-fifth person as stated within Article 1, Section 2 of the Constitution. So when you gain back those two things, you know, um, you know, as well as also if you look at it from... The five senses, you know, your seeing and your, um, which is your sight and your hearing is also missing because if we told you what was going on, you wouldn't believe it, even though you heard it. If I showed you via internet, you would say, well, you know, that could be disinformation. You wouldn't believe it. Right. So in both ways, um, our senses has been stagnated barrier, you know, with understanding who we actually are and what it is to take us into the future. Um, automobile companies plan 5, 10, 15, 20 more years in advance. We have to learn how to be futuristic and start planning in advance. Yeah. And that means having a plan A, plan B, plan C, Etc. In order to make sure that whatever we're doing, everything can stay on course. All right. This is what we have to start doing as more um, as tribal or indigenous people, not just in the Americas, but around the world. You know, we have to begin to start doing this, whether we're aborigines in Australia, whether we're Africans in Africa, whether we're um, Washita or Lenape or Choctaw or Cherokee, or many other Native American tribes here in, the, in, in particular within North America, um, as well as through Central and South America and the adjoining islands. We have to begin to start understanding that the dichotomy, you know, what's taking place on planet Earth in society, um, many refer to it like Francis Quest Wells and Dr. Francis Quest Wells have referred to it as white supremacy. And the reason why white supremacy exists is because the fear of a black planet, essentially, um, the fear of us being able to genetically annihilate the European. In other words, sexually um, or physically. The fear exists based on um, the history in which that is, um, in which that has been perpetuated against people of color. Um, you know, of you know, Moors, i.e., Moors. You know, so-called Negroes, Blacks, and Colors here within. North America. And because of that, there's a fear in which that exists amongst the Europeans of the possibility of us raising up to that conscious level and taking up arms and actually going after them. Mm-hmm. Um, in the movie, it showed that their whole thing was going after the minority. 
or the so-called minority, as they refer to us as, and we know what the word minority means within Black's Law Dictionary, in particular, um, the seven or six edition, it states that it's someone of immaturity, someone who has a right. inf- infant mind, and someone who can't handle their own affairs. So basically, the word minor or minority um, puts us in the category as slaves, because the word slave within Black's Law Dictionary 4th edition states specifically that a slave is someone who, um, that their whole entire life is guided and controlled by their masters or someone who is over them. And they right. have no right to even um, state otherwise. Okay? So these are the things in which that is taking place. And so when you analyze this movie, um, you have to come to the conclusion of one thing. What are you going to do? Now, we speaks about the so-called nine battlefronts that we made mention of the various ones. Um, we understand that that based on Minister Farrakhan, he stated within the Black Family Agenda, this is a tape in which that came out in the, I think it was in the late 80s um, or early 90s, um, in which that he stated that there were three things in which that Congress said they was not going to teach us. Now, it just so happened that these three things in which that Congress said they was not going to teach us was actually part of the nine battlefront. This is just three aspects of the nine, but these obviously was the most important ones to them. Right. It says sex. Sex, which is, of course, generation, the science of gender or DNA. Mm-hmm. It was never going to teach us that. They say it was not going to teach us banking or economics, which is financing. Right. And they said it was not going to teach us. Right. Mm-hmm. Military science. And, uh, uh, go ahead, brother. Military science. Right. Military. And war. Military, right. Military science or strategy or war. In which, of course, you can learn simply by playing chess because chess was based on um, defeating of the enemy and the moves in which that you can make. And, of course, um, we know that chess was first developed in Africa in ancient Egypt or Tamare or Tamari. So um, we would be actually the best strategists. Matter of fact, uh, some of the best players in the world are actually melanated people. Okay, so um, these are the three things in which they said they would never teach us. So we know that war um, was one of the nine aspects, which um, um, I'm stating it is, because it is based on Nelly Fuller and, Francis, and Dr. Francis Cross Wilson um, analogies. Um, and so war, we understand that you must learn tactical maneuvers, uh, especially for those on which that have already been in the military, you already have. The understanding of that, overstanding, understanding of that, mm-hmm. and those who also know martial arts. Um, so it would be, it would be, of us to learn martial arts, to learn, in particular, um, various forms of martial arts to make your make yourself well rounded, not just necessarily mixed martial arts. All right, but I'm talking about real martial arts, um, jiu-jitsu, um, qigong, tai chi, um, capoeira, um, aikido, various mm-hmm. right, aikido, various forms of of um, karate, uh, Korean karate, which is now called taekwondo, um, wing chun. Uh, you know, all these various forms, forms of Kung Fu, um, the various animal styles, so forth and so on. Um, learn how to do internal power. Um, that means activating and breathing through your chakras, um, opening them, them up, being able to in particular, particularly store energy into the Dantians, the three Dantians, the three treasures, um, the lower Dantian, which is the navel, the upper Dan, well, the, the mid Dantian, which is heart, the upper Dantian, which is called the upper Roman Christianity, which is the third eye, 
um, learning how to store energy into these particular areas um, give you an extra boost of power, strength, um, gusto, all right, endurance, you know, giving you the duration or the ability to continue on during a battle or a war, all right? Um, learn the science of Reiki, praying and healing in order to heal while in combat. Learning acupressure, reflexology, acupuncture, learning e, um, EFT, which is emotional freedom tapping. Learning as many energy modalities possible you know, in order to correct stagnated and blockages of prana chi or ki energy. This is necessary to learn these particular arts um, for war, all right? Learn Demok, which is called the touch of death, which is one uh, which is related to Tai Chi or Qigong, which that give you the ability in order to learn how to strike acu, um, acu points or acupressure points, which is 108 acupressure points and 36 of the acupressure points, um, if hit correctly, or real damaging and deadly, which that actually a person can die. Just like if you get hit within the solar plexus, you disrupt the nervous exactly. system, exactly. and a person can actually die from that blow. Um, so understanding these things, because this is what you must learn: learn archery, learn um, weapon combat. Okay. Um, in other words, learn how to shoot rifles, um, exactly. semi-automatic, automatic um, guns. All right. So for war, you know, be prepared. You know, if anything jumps off, if it don't, then that's good. You know, but your training would never go in vain because you can always teach the next generation. Mm-hmm. Um, so that they can protect themselves. You know, if anything jumps off. Um, We know and heard about concentration camps, debt prisons, detention centers, and we've seen these, I guess, what, I think it's like 40 to 400,000 coffins in Georgia, something like that, in which that um, is next to the train lines, and so... They look as if they was the size, you know, in which that can actually be used for a human being. Exactly. So what is it, you know, um, also in Georgia, there's a actual monument set up to population control agenda in which that states that they want um, more than 4 billion people to be eliminated from the face of the planet. Preferably by mm. drugs, disease, and war. Um, I remember I first got a glimpse or um, understanding of that when I was about 14, 15 years old. It was back in 84, 85. Um, there was a news article in the New Amsterdam's News, which was a paper in which that comes out in, in Harlem, um, New York. And I was reading it and on... And inside of it, it spoke about how President Carter, through what is called the Global Report 2000, meaning by the year 2000, Mm -hmm. they wanted 2.7 billion non-white people to be eliminated from the face of the planet. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. And that was in 1984. So that correlates to Rex 84, which President Reagan signed in 1984 in which that was the updated version to the King Alpha plan, in which that um, Nixon, you know, um, you know, basically put into action. And in the King Alpha plan, it spoke about how the minorities would be a formidable opponent if he would ever learn that he was linked by heritage to this land mass. Exactly. Right. So, um, 
and that there was no, that he could not seek asylum anywhere else. In other words, he cannot go back to Africa because no. we have not been to Africa, you know, in over 400 years. Some of us, most of us, the Empress stated that 85% of our ancestry was already here from the Native Americans who was already here prior to the European invasion of their territory 400 years ago. In other words, the Europeans did not bring us over here on ships. We were already we already were doing import and export and trade from Africa with the so-called Native Americans and actually set up camp here over six over five thousand years ago. And further back, as a matter of fact, the OX who were Africans who was related um, who came from out of the Malian Empire who was related to the Mandis or the Mandingo people who was cousins to the Dogons, and the Dogons came from out of ancient Egypt um, approximately 8,000 years ago, um, we was already here, all right? We were the ones mm-hmm. who built the pyramids and the mounds over the 5,000 years, all right? There was over 200,000 mounds and pyramids in North America. Most have been destroyed, and now there's only about 20,000. All right, so you have to understand um, the science of combat. And for those who actually practice martial arts or who have actually been in the military, whether it's the various branches, whether it's the Air Force, whether it's Marines, Navy, or Army, um, we understand that it would be necessary in order to teach your people survival skills. Because you were taught these things in the military, how to survive. Right. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, of course, you can watch the TV show Survivalist or reruns. <clears throat> um, that's fine, you know. But there's little things in which that you can always pick up from those who actually been through it. <clears throat> and so and that's what we recommend for war, for sex, right. for understanding that tantra clear yoga. You get into the science Tantra um, and Kriya Yoga. Tantra is the left-hand path. Kriya is the right-hand path. And when you combine them, it produces the middle path in which that um, the individual who brought the unification of these two systems was my teacher, Grand Master Sun Yata Sarasuri, in which that he taught the highest principles of sexuality. Um, he taught the highest secrets of breathing, of Qigong, of Tai Chi, Reiki, pranic healing, all of these energy modalities he taught. Um, I was with him from 2005 and was still gaining information from him all the way up until just last year. And he passed May 21st of this past year, 2014. But he taught us plenty of information in which that deals with the sexual nature and how you can circulate the energy in a macro or mac- micro or macro cosmic orbit technique. And um, after several rotations, um, and after you have learned how to condense the energy and uh, accumulate the energy into your dantians, you're able to then rotate the energy, all right, and then able to then pack the energy down into the cells deeper and deeper by rotating your hands around your belly 36 times um, clockwise and then 24 times counterclockwise and packing the energy into your dantian, in particular your lower dantian, so that um, you gain longevity. What it does is lengthen your telomeres, which are um, the extensions or the elliptical um, strands of your DNA. lengthens them. Mm. So that means that it gives you a longer life so that you can accomplish um, your goals um, on this planet, all right? Um, many do not know why they came to the planet, so therefore, this might not interest you. But for those who have a purpose and have a a meaning, you know, and know why they came here and, and a job to do and what they found out the job is, what their job is, then 
this is very important for those who want to understand these various techniques. So um, then afterwards, you can um, do what is called the cobra breath, a cosmic cobra breath technique, in which that um, after you do these particular um, sciences, you can actually do on a sexual act um, it's within you know, the age limit of what Stephen Chang speaks about within Tao Sexology. He speaks about the fact that your age times 0.2. So, for mm-hmm. example, if you were 20 years old, 0.2, uh, 4.0. In other words, every four days you can ejaculate without losing your life force. If you're 30, then every six days. If you're 40, every eight days. If you're 50, every um, 10 days. If you're um, 60, every 12 days. So it goes on like that. So if you're within that time span, then you can ejaculate without losing your life force. And mm-hmm. so all the energy in which that you have gathered, you know, um, by practicing these energy modalities, you are able to store within your body. So hence, lengthen in your life. Um, and so if you have the sexual experience during that time period of the two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, 10, 12, or et cetera days, then um, in particular, the male do not have to worry about um, the loss of life force. Um, he has accumulated plenty, um, mm. you know, during the days in which that he has not um, ejaculated. Um, also, there's a principle of ejaculation in which that you can actually touch about an inch underneath the right um, chest, nipple, as well as also in between what's called the million dollar spot, in between there's a little indenture between the anal and the genitals. Uh, uh, the scrotum sac, uh, where the testes are, in which that in the center there, um, you can press that, and that will stop the ejaculation by turning your eyes upwards toward heavens or towards the sky or stars, and by doing so, um, removing your thought process away from the ejaculation process, and you will ejaculate, in which that will cause um, the sperm to travel up the spine to the top of the head to get bathed in the third ventricle by um, the pineal gland, which the soul is embedded inside of, and which that sperm, which is the Christ, received the spark of life from the soul, which is then travels back down um, to the testicles in order to be gushed forth um, into the woman. Um, But that energy can actually be rotated instead of of ejaculation. It can be ejaculated so that can produce regeneration. So once again, the regeneration principle is based on the extension of your life. So these techniques was taught how to become immortalized. And this is why they say they would not teach you that science. So you see um, war goes a whole lot deeper than what you thought. You see that sex goes a whole lot deeper than you thought. And now we get to the banking or economics or financing because the world is ran off the uniform commercial code, which is the commerce, and commerce is based on contracts. So you must learn contract mm-hmm. law. You must learn equity, all right? You must learn common law or constitutional law in order to invoke your rights or unalienable rights as you would want them to be, mm-hmm. all right? So um, when it comes to contract law, the Constitution states that you have the right, um, even though Article 6 is the only one portion, is probably the 10 Bill of Rights is what we actually um, can utilize as more. But it, we also see that it states about contracts. Um, that I believe is in Article 2, in which that it states specifically about the contracts, in which that you have the right to contract as much as you would like. So, therefore, in order to protect the contracts, you must always put all rights reserved or all liberties reserved. Um, you must put UCC 1-3.6 or UCC um, 1-308, um, formerly 1-207, in which that it was changed about five years ago um, to um, because the Moors began to understand what was going on um, in the banking system. So any contract in which that you sign, you will want to sign these codes or these particular phrases 
um, in between your name on any and every contract to protect yourself. Mm-hmm. All right? Um, that's the first thing. So now um, those particular codes means without prejudice. Um, the 103.6 means without prejudice, means um, they cannot be biased or discriminate um, against you because of ethnicity or because of your race or because of your nationality or because of your creed or et cetera. Disabilities or no disabilities, et cetera, without prejudice, all right? Then one, then 1-308, one which was formerly 207, basically gives uh, and preserve all your rights, you know, all your unalienable rights in which that God gave you, not man. So, therefore, yeah. it taps you back into um, the Constitution. One um, dash 308 taps you back into the Constitution, um, in particular, the Declaration of Independence, where it states that you have unalienable, uh, unalienable rights, um, God given rights, in which that the Constitution itself just guarantees, all right? Um, the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Right, that's what it's talked about within the Declaration of Independence. Um, and all men are created equal. All right. The Constitution itself, um, there's four constitutions for those that don't understand what I'm talking about. You have the you, you have the Constitution for the United States, which becomes the United States Constitution after revising um and adding on with the amendments. Mm-hmm. You have the Declaration of Independence, you have the Articles of Association. You have the Articles of Confederation. These are the so-called four constitutions. So it behooves you to do your research and study those four constitutions also and oh, see yeah. how they relate to international law, in particular on the universal, um, the universal, what is called the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People, number one, and then also the Universal Declaration on Human Rights. That was passed in 1948. Um, the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People was passed. The, um, the United States signed on it on in 2000. What I think it was December the 16th, 2010. 2010. Um, yeah. But it was passed September the 7th through the 13th um, of 2007. All right. Um, forgive me if some of these dates are off. I'm doing everything from memory, so you know. Um, doing all right. As you do, right, as you do your research, you're gonna find what I'm talking about to be right and exact, um, or right or near right and exact, as the lesson state. So um, let's continue on. So financing is based on the law of commerce. Commerce, um, we can say commerce started around 6,000 years ago in what they call Mesopotamia or Babylon, um, in which that trade, you know, um, began amongst the people, and they would use salt um, as one of the mediums, beads or gems as a medium um, of trade. And these things became precious. And so over time, we see how copper, gold, silver, platinum, um, jade, in which that was always, you know, um, one of the precious gems in China and throughout the Orient and Japan, et cetera. Um, all these things became precious minerals or precious gems or stones or rocks in which that was also traded for money or goods. Um, they was used as money or traded as, you know, and traded, you know, for goods. And goods would mean inanimated or animated objects. Mm-hmm. All right, so hence we later on get slavery um, from man developing the method to do so because man became lazy, he didn't want to do his own chores and be responsible for his own self and his own family. So they will purchase others in order to do so. All right, this of course became a big commodity um, during the um, Arab slave trade, during the transatlantic slave trade. All right, um, in which that we would see that how corporations would begin to start making their finances off of the free labor. 
mm-hmm. the Ratner, um, which is an insurance company made their money off of free labor, Brown's University, Harvard University, Yale University, all of them made their monies off of free labor. Um, um, railroads, I think it was RX. Um, I can't remember. I think it's SRX or something like that. Railroads in which that made their money off of free labor. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, now we done evolved into the new Jim Crow era in which that now the, the monies are being made off of the prisoners who's working for 29 cents to a dollar and six cents an hour. Mm-hmm. Um, in which they, they're not even being paid minimum wage, but the store boss, which is the warden, and the prison, in particular privatized prisons, are stating that they are making minimum wage. <laughs> so they're getting funding, you know, um, by grants. They're getting funding by lobbyists, you know, lobbyists, um, well, I should say advertisement. Um, those who want to buy into the bonds, we, we noticed that Michael Jordan invested two hundred million dollars to privatize prison system. Mm. Wow. Two hundred million dollars. Mm. So, this is how they're getting their money. Right is on the back end, and. The whole thing is, is that being that it's privatized, that means that you want to keep the prison 100% filled at all times. Because remember, they have the prisoners paying for their items in there, their toothbrushes, their soap, their um, hair gel or um, shampoos, conditioners. And all those items, the prisoners have to purchase off the twenty nine cents to a dollar and six cents that they're making in prison. And then they also have to pay for phone calls, which is over fifteen dollars for um which is actually yeah, almost fifteen dollars for fifteen minutes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the prisoners oftentimes have to rely on family members and others, all right? And when we talk about, we talk about it's eleven ninety nine plus um, some other charge in which they get, which is about three dollars and some change. So yeah, it comes up to about fifteen dollars or so that you actually pay or more. I guess depends on the prison. So. They did not want us to know financing and banking because we would understand that based on the Fibonacci numbers, there are various federal forms, state forms, in which that correlate to the Fibonacci numbers, in which that we can actually utilize in a sequence to get us out of prison. And actually, in a sense, to make you almost a made man. In other words, someone who is almost untouchable. Mm -hmm. So they do not want you to understand that because you would be able to learn how to write money orders or bonds right off your computer by simply activating your UCC trust account through the Secretary of, of Treasury who's now in position is Jacob Lou, who's over it, mm. in which that you would be able to be banned, come to open and activate your UCC trust account, and you would be able to use the RE or RA or RB number, which is actually the red mail tab number, in which that you would send on your package with all your various UCC affidavits and forms um, with these particular Connecting pieces, like you said, um, you have Form 56, you have Optional Form 90, Optional Form 91, you have Affidavit Form 28. All these particular forms, if you notice, correlates to the Fibonacci numbers in which that you can actually utilize to 
get yourself from out from prison is then also be able to do an unincorporated association in which that you are not an incorporated or a corporation, but mm-hmm. in or unincorporated organization or association in which that you are able to do the same thing, which is being able to um, receive grants. Some grants do not dictate to you that it has to be an incorporation. But an incor- unincorporation can actually work too. Um, also, um, it can be tax exempt based on the status and based on the way in which that you organize it. So now you have extra funds in order to utilize um, throughout the year. All right. Um, so they did not want you to learn business. So basically, banking, finance, economics is actually business. They didn't, never want you to learn the science of business. Remember, they destroyed right. Black Wall Street, which was 36 blocks of industrious, melanated people mm-hmm. who had movies, um, theaters, who had laundry mats, stores, grocery stores, barbershops, salons, had everything in which that a town would need in order to operate. And the United States, you know, at the behest of the so-called KKK because of someone whistling supposedly at a European in an elevator, they loaded up their planes and dropped bombs. All right, this is where you get the Gap Band song, You Dropped a Bomb on Me, mm-hmm. baby. All right, this is where that comes from. All right, they was from Greenwood, district of Tulsa, Oklahoma, where this took place at. So you had all of these um, things in which that transpired in the 1920s, I think it was around 1922. Right. Um, 19, yeah, 1922, 23, when that took place. So we're looking at them not wanting to, you to have a Black Wall Street, as it was called, in which that will rival White Wall Street. All right? So they destroyed it because we also had banks and different other um trades for import and export. So they destroyed it. All right. So that's why you have to learn the science of war, security, or defense in order to right. protect whatever you build. You cannot build something without protecting it. Exactly. Whether it's surveillance okay. cameras, whether it's surveillance cameras, whether it's um security guards or officers um, or, you know, or whether um, you learning these various survival skills or martial arts or, you know, um, gun combat, it has to be protected in some shape, form, or fashion. There's no doubt about it. All right? That's so right. Um, war goes along with business. When you go to a business, you always see security guards if they are large enough. You see security guards, key officers, armed and unarmed, checking the building, checking people, making sure things are right so that they won't lose their investment and their property and their assets. Exactly. All right. So you have to begin to start doing that. These are the three things out of the nine um, confrontations that we have to learn. And these are the most important ones. All right. I'm going to go to um, the phone line. So for those who want to call in, 626-414-3535. That's 626-414-3535. Give us a call. All oh, right. Yeah. Um, what's your what's your spin or twist on the information we've been dropping so far? What you know? What's on your mind? 
Okay, yeah, the the uh, the, the prison system, yeah, they, they, there's a new, what you call the new factories now, where they get all, uh, what you call, uh, well, maybe by saying cheap labor is an understatement, you know, but uh, sure. they claim they're getting uh, 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 a minimum wage. Uh, if, they, if, they're, if they're getting that kind of wages, like you just said, but where is the minimum wages going to? Also, exactly. you know, they're constantly draining uh, the, the the people here in America and across the world as well. They're draining uh, right. the prisoners. They're draining the, the, uh, the families of these prisoners. Uh, right, like I because, said the, United before, because got, the United States has the highest um, imprisonment in the world. The population, the highest population imprisonment in the world, brother. Ain't that something? Man, that's something. Yeah, that's what, that's what France... Britain and um, Germany combined. Ain't that something? So you know something's terribly wrong, you know. Uh, right. uh, uh, and 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 it go also goes to show you, to prove my point, that this system is ran by a criminal empire, right? Or a criminally insane empire, I should say. Right. What is right? There's no coincidence that these same people who oftentimes jock into these high positions. Um, they come from the family line of those prisoners who was released from out of Britain, out of England prison system, to come here and, you know, steal the land of the indigenous people and to start what they have done and which that we see the end result. Oh yeah. Yeah, and and, and, and uh the end result is devastating uh to us. You know, as a Aboriginal as Indigenous Moorish people, uh, 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 they have uh, you name it. Uh, you uh, take your, your 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 buying homes like your mortgages, which is nothing but a death pledge, because you know more more means death, it means dead. Exactly. You know? And uh, right. that's why when they try to build the people for the mortgage rate or, uh, uh, or try to take their homes away from them, they never show them the original document. Or the mortgage uh, document, because uh, 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 shoot, I guess maybe by a couple of hours when you sign that paper, that paper would probably be in Australia or Brazil some damn where, you know, uh, different types of people uh, uh, dipping and dabbing or, or making money off of it. That's why you never see the original document. That's right. Because, because uh, uh, they, they show them the original document, then they know what time it is. You know who's all these other people? Who all these, who is this? Who is that? Who is this person in England? Who is this person in in in, in uh, Russia? You know, and I, I never I never dealt with these people before. You know, but, uh, but that's what's going on. You know, same right. with the birth certificates, which is a bond right. that's set against all of us. Right. You know, uh, the Europeans well, uh, like they, the, they, they the so-called the reason why. Right, and that's the reason why they would never teach us business is because business or economics or Financing or banking is actually utilizing the people as the commodity. Oh yeah, and, and making making up a, a, a more. I mean, a profit. I mean, through the years, you know, this profiting off of it. You know, through our energy and labor, because they know right. There's no and money. that's the reason. Right. So nineteen. So eighteen sixty five. We see the so called. Um, well, 1863 was when it was stated, the proclamation, um, Emancipation Proclamation, in which that was done by Lincoln, in which that didn't free anyone. However, um, for two years, word got around, allegedly, to the so-called plantations, in which that, um, based on the winning of the North, the South has to relinquish their slaves, you know, when mm-hmm. they're getting free wages. And now you see how poor the South is compared to the North. Because they was moving into the industrial age in which that they needed that so called um they needed the people exactly. in the south to come up north in order to help with the industrial revolution. Exactly. You know, that is no coincidence that all of that took place around the exact same time. The industrial revolution sparked off and jumped off um in the late eighteen hundreds and they needed the bodies there in order to manufacture in which that of course they paid them, you know, cheap labor at that time. You mm-hmm. know, I'm pretty sure it had to be around that same 29 cents 
status, <laughs> you know, which that is um, now taking place in the prison system. Mm-hmm. But at least they you know something as compared to just slavery. There was no wages except for um, the slop or the crumbs from off the master's table, mm-hmm. right? In most cases, at least exactly. from the historical information that we've studied over the last um, 30 years. So therefore, exactly. we understand that there is, um, that's the reason why, of course, they would not want us to learn these sciences. This is why they still today fragment, fragment you in their corporations. If you mm-hmm. go to a factory, um, you either want to work in a um, manufacturing department, you want to work in um, import or export or the office or etc. You're going to have to work in various compartments in order to get the full grasp or understanding mm-hmm. uh, of how to put together your own corporation properly. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, they keep you fragmented, so you just work in one compartment or department your whole life. Exactly. So you so, uh, you drive a right, right. So you never learn business skills, and they never teach you. Let me tell you what they taught me in business class, because I business was my major when I first went to college, mm-hmm. the first two years, and I learned nothing but equations. That's it. Supply and demand. That's all they kept saying over and over again. Supply and demand, and here go the damn equations in order to help you. I don't need no goddamn equations to learn business. <laughs> okay? But they made it into a math class, essentially, in order to throw you off from how simple supply and demand actually is. Mm-hmm. But see, I already was rolling with brothers already had a store and so we basically had a store you know um, and we would go out and sell products incense, oil use books clothing etc alright and we would come mm-hmm. back and put all our, all our money together and buy products for the store so we would mm. get wholesale accounts from the various corporations which would give us 40% off or more on the products and then resell the products which we have to mark it up at least one to three times higher alright and so that's how we was able to learn the science of business Mm -hmm. was by doing it not by exactly. sitting in class, reading damn math equations, talking about this is supply and demand. S equals D equals, oh, you know, come on. No, <laughs> that's not it. That's not it. So, not, not, um, at the same time, I'm teaching you nothing. Right, right. So I understood by the, my second year that um, I'm not going in business mm-hmm. because this is not um, right information. Economics is not right information. Right. Um, they make it um, harder than what it is. And so, yes, they don't want you to understand how simple it is, you know, and how easy it is because they want to make you not go into it, not understand it. So guess what? After I was able to do that with the brothers, I was able to open my own business, Cultural wow. Freedom Bookstore. And my wife and I was able to reduplicate the same thing that me and the brothers did years earlier while I was in college. So basically, we had a store while I was in college in which that um, various brothers, all of us lived together, and we got together every day and sold products and bought the money back in order to get more products. Mm. So that was supply because we created the demand. You create the demand. And then you put forth the supply. There you so go. I'll tell you that. You create the demand. All right. So if someone want oil, you, you 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 give them the best smelling oil, you, and then they want some more next week. Sure will. Or they're gonna tell their friend, yo, this is what yo, this is what is popping right here. Yo, I need that. Yo, well, go check out the brother down the street. Yo, they got it. 
You create mm-hmm. the demand to be supplied. All right? So this is what they weren't telling people. So it's a very simple process in business. I've done it. Mm-hmm. Right now, um, as a matter of fact, um, we was able to get a house and took the land for nine hundred dollars, and now yeah. it's tax exempt. Ooh. Right now it's tax exempt, and we built our store on our land and a temple on our land. So we're not playing. We know supply and demand, and how to create the um, demand to be supplied. Mm-hmm. And you do that by giving the people what they want. But you also give the people even more so what they need. People need to be healed. There's too much high blood pressure, diabetes, heart attacks, strokes in the black community. Far too much. Dr. Collett was poisoned. I wish that produced a brain hemorrhage, which is a stroke. He died. Mm-hmm. All right, Johnny Cochran, they say a weapon, post being weapon, or some type of uh, frequency machine possibly created his brain hemorrhage in which that caused him to die. Mm. Amos Wilson happened the same thing with him. All right, um, Bobby E. Wright. It is stated that he also died of a stroke or a brain stroke. So we understand we have to be in good health as part of this war. Mm-hmm. So health becomes one of the nine battlefronts. Actually, it would be ten. All right? And health means that you have to get adequate electrical water, which is alkaline water, electrical food, which is fruits and vegetables, organically as possible. Right. You have to eat all this on a daily basis, drink this on a daily basis, and even more so than food and drink because you can go without food for a month. You can go without uh, water for two weeks approximately, but you can only go without air for three minutes. So the most right. important thing is how to breathe. Become a breatharian. Not saying that you just have to end up leaving food and water alone because it's not necessary unless you reach that particular stage of enlightenment. Mm-hmm. However, um, you can still become a breatharian and practice the techniques on a daily basis in which that recharge your bodily system, like we said, by practicing um, Qigong, in which that you're able to store energy or prana chi energy into your dantians. This becomes an important aspect of the health. All right? You have to learn how to do this. So you also need to learn herbology because the scriptures or the Bible states that Every herb that produces seed is meant for the meat of the nation. Basically, what that means is that the herbs is the meat. In other words, uh, we know that herbs in which that produce seeds is able to, is very high alkalinity or pH balance. It's above 7.4 pH balance, in which that helps. For a person whose blood is under 7.0, which is just the average, um, you know, actually when you go below 7.0, your body begins to start going into an acidic state. Mm -hmm. So herbs are highly alkaline in order to put your body back into an alkaline state. So know that there's various blood cleansers that you would need on a daily basis, chaparral, Graviola, which is sour sap. Um, golden seal, dandelion, alfalfa, 
Burdock, Yellow Dock, Padiaco, Echinacea, all these various blood cleansers, chickweed, all these various blood cleansers must be used on a daily basis to help destroy candidas, to help destroy arthritis, rheumatism, um, cayenne pepper is the best to help with the regulation of the heart and also of the nervous system and the brain so that plaque cannot build up within the arteries, capillaries, veins, etc. These are very important herbs, in particular that cayenne pepper, because cayenne pepper was, um, is the catalyst for all the others that I may mention of. And when combined, um, becomes a very important um, health prevent, preventer. Mm-hmm. All right? We understand that you must also have foti, ingo, bilaba, watercola, um, astralicus roots. These are immortality herbs. These are longevity herbs that I'm making up. Ginseng. So these, in particular, um, um, Korean red ginseng or pax, paknak, um, panax, um, ginseng or or American ginseng, all right, horny goat weed, soft plamento, picium, all right, these are longevity herbs. It's necessary. Digestive right. herbs being that the blood is produced within the digestive system. Fenugreek is one of the best herbs to use for the digestive system. Casagara or Casanagrata. All right, is good to use. Senna is good to use. Marshmallow root, slippery mm. elm. These are the herbs in which that is needed to eliminate waste properly from being constipated or having diarrhea in the body, and to eliminate um, hemorrhoids, etc. Mm. Right, so these herbs are used as part of the health regimen. You understand the foods, all right? For those who study Dr. Um, Lele Africa, Dr. Paul Goss, Dr. Sabi, Queen of Fua, all right, um, Dr. Phil Valentine, for those who study um, what they teach or what they have taught. Um, I won't get too much into the hybrid foods because some of them are naturally hybrid, created by nature, in order to offset something in which that has become detrimental or become a virus upon the planet. Mm -hmm. Um, That is white supremacy in the European state of mind, which has become detrimental to the people on the planet. Right. So, what I mean by that is that now people are gauged, or their mind is now gauged towards cloning, artificial insemination, intro fertilization methods, cryogenics, all right, artificial foods, GMO, which is genetically modified organisms, or Franken foods, as we refer to them as. Chemtrails, harp system, or any other um, machinery or electronic in which they oscillate at 60 hertz. When your cellular structure oscillates at 100 hertz. And so that means anytime you're around electronics and you do not have magnets, at least 3,000 to 6,000 gulfs magnets, if you do not have argon energy, if you do not have um, diodes or iodots, um, which are um, these are the gadgets in which that Dr. Deborah Blair always speaks about, these things offset the radiation from the computers and eliminates um, the low vibrations. In other words, it creates or tune up the frequency. 
And so these things are needed around these gadgets mm. because your cells oscillate at 100 hertz and puts out 120 um, watts or BTUs of energy. Mm-hmm. In other words, it's equivalent to a 120 watt light bulb. One cell put out that much energy. Mm. Except because you have not been taught martial arts, internal power, 90% of the light escapes from your top of your head as heat. The opposite is done within a lightning bug or a um of a lightning bug or what's called firefly. The opposite is done. They keep 90% of the heat in their body in which that they transfer through chemical called luciferous and luciferin to produce the light element within them. In other words, that's what caused them to light up at night and only lose 10% as heat. You mm. must turn yourself around. You must turn yourself around and begin to start doing like the firefly. And this is really what they're afraid of. I don't know who we are. Who this is why we are to be. Right. This is, right. And this is why these arts was kept secret for hundreds and thousands of years. Okay. So mm-hmm. this is what we need to be focusing on. Get yourself straight. Start understanding what's really happening on this planet. And prepare yourself in every shape, form, and fashion from the physical to the spiritual. This is what we're about. We talk about um, the holistic view, our understanding of holistic means. All right, we're going to go to the phone line right quick. We got area code 347. You're on the line. Hey, Doc. Hey, peace. Peace. What's good, man? Um, I, 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 um, I work for a dialysis clinic, right? Right. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to figure out what they're doing with these kidneys, man. What's going on with the kidneys? Because this, this population is growing massively, you know? Well, this, that goes back to part of the sexual or the sex um, portion of what we was talking about. All right? This goes back to that because the kidneys are the sexual um, energy um, within the body. The sexual energy is stored at the kidneys or at the navel chakra. So without the kidneys, the sexual nature um, degenerates. So these kidneys are being placed. These A lot of black market, uh, we know that you can get kidneys um, for about $80,000 to $120,000 um, for kidneys. And on the black wow. market, it's probably less than that. You'll probably get it for about 40000 So um, these kidneys are being used um, in these so-called elites or those who can pay the price for rich people, um, and they're being taken from those within the hospital as well as also those on the streets. And uh, um, there was a movie in which that came out years ago in which that showed that. I can't remember the name of the movie right now, um, but I think it was by Michael Creedon. All right, the name of um, um, he was the author of the book, but it was turned into a movie. But his name was Michael Creedon, but I can't remember the name of the movie right now. But um, hey, Robin, okay. huh? I'm at the blog talk show. I'm on the blog talk show. Anything wrong? Yeah. Right. So, um, I. Um, so check that check that out, Michael Creedon, yeah, okay. and then check out the movie in which that was made um, made into it. I can't remember uh-huh. the name of the movie right now. I'm going to go and look it up right quick and get back to you and tell you the name of it. Right. But um, that movie showed you. That, that movie showed you um, the purpose of the organs and what they're doing with All the right, organs, now. brother. Okay. Okay. Right okay. I got a, I got another question too in regards to the birth rates and such. 
Mike, because I'm, 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 I'm definitely heading towards the direction of, of trying to get everything situated and, and trying to nationalize and get, do the birth rights and get everything Outstanding. situated. Outstanding. Well, uh, right. Yeah, I'm trying to um, get an understanding uh, to uh, you know the time time frame in regards to you know how how long does the process actually take in regards to you know once Less the, the paperwork is. Say again. Less than two weeks, brother. You can take less than two, two weeks. weeks. Mm-hmm. That's excellent. Okay. And um, in regards to, um, like, say you we're claiming birth rights, right? We we doing we, we're going through the, the process. I mean, how, how does that? I mean, how you can you break it down in regards to like? I mean, how how, how does this work? Um. Well, basically, yeah. what you would do. Is you will have your nationality documents, your nationalization, um, your common law name correction form, your denial of corporate status, your live claim birth, which is your baptismal record, um, your non taxpayer status. And basically, what you would do is take that information um, down to the Register of Deeds office or either to the Clerk of Superior Court and register it or put it on record. And it will go on the public record showing that you have stated that you something that you are other than a Negro black and colored. Yes. And that you okay. have reclaimed your heritage here within the Americas as Washita, or you have reclaimed your Moorish status, which is tied to the land. When you look up the definition of land within Black's Law Dictionary, you will see um the word Moor is embedded inside of the definition of land. So the word moors and land are synonymous. They're mm-hmm. identical. So therefore, you have tied yourself back to this land mass um, as compared to Negro, Black, and Colored has no tie to land mass whatsoever. Um, and then they try to give you two statuses, which is African American, in which Africa has 53 countries in it, and America has this part, this three countries. In America, you have North America, Central America, South America, and then also Americana, which is actually part of the what is called the adjoining islands. So the question is, which America do you come from? So you can't be part of four continents at one time. Exactly. <laughs> right. Unless you claim to be a continental, you know, um, a continental, um, I guess you say, a continental American. Hmm. Okay. Right. Um, so the best thing is being able to specify who you are and from the knowledge and the information that we have gathered from the Empress Verdias and Guest on Turner Bay, she stated specifically that eighty to eighty five percent of our heritage was right here in the Americas prior to the invasion of four hundred years ago by the Europeans. Right. So, therefore, we understand that we are the real indigenous people or Native Americans. No doubt. Mm. Okay. And, and in regards to that, all the tax situations and all that, I, I, I would be, that'd be, I'd be tax exempt in regards to, I mean, well, I continue to work in all this. I mean, how would they accept right. my status in, in regards to the work right. situation? Well, number one, you do not have to. Explain to them or tell them of your status. Right, That's right. number one. Unless mm-hmm. you choose to. And right. if you do, then you would take your documents to the job and tell them that you want to redo a W-2 or a W-4. Then you would mm-hmm. do in lieu of a W-4 or a W-8-B-E-N form and on line mm-hmm. 7 it states, are you exempt? You would state that you are. Right, Within right. two weeks, it would be state and federally what? Exempt. Right. Right now, you have the corporations making you pay the taxes for them. That's what the right, W-2 right. and the W-4 form is for. Hmm. Okay. That's what right. that is for. Well, I have rights to, to back taxes, like all them years of be paying all these damn taxes. 
Will I have rights to get those at? Because I didn't know before. And now I know now, and I've been paying these damn taxes all this all this time. I mean, will no. I have a right to get no. those? Mm. No. What you can do is actually do a 1099 OID, which is mm-hmm. uh, what is called OID means the original or the original issuer of the discount. OID means the original issuer of the discount. And what that mm-hmm. means is that banks make, uh, when you give banks any money, they mark it up 10 times the value, which is called mm-hmm. inflation, which is also referred to as fractionalized banking. Mm-hmm. Now, when they use your Social Security card, they use the money from off of that. Or they get them, or uh, they pay the debts and utilize the funds from off of your Social Security card. That's why they ask you for your Social Security card. The number on the mm-hmm. back is the IMF, which is the International Monetary Fund number. But they specifically um, use that number, those numbers, in order to um, get, you know, get funds. Now, do you have a right in order to tap into those funds? Of course. But not until after you request the activation of your UCC trust account by way of um, the state of um, the secretary of um, the secretary of treasury. So when you say tapping into these funds, how, how, how I mean, like, well, they how, how, does their, that, how, how does they that work? The, you know? They set up the funds when you the day you was born. They set right. up those funds are ready for you. Right, they say you was worth three. They they say you was worth your weight in gold. So let's say you was born ten pounds. Gold right now is um over a thousand. Oh, okay, over a thousand. Thank you, sir. Over a thousand um dollars. All right. It, um, up until recently, it was actually as high as almost two thousand dollars. But let's hmm. right. But let's say it was a thousand dollars. So a thousand dollars times. Um, ten pounds. Remember, with each pound is sixteen ounces. So sixteen right. ounces times one thousand, right? Ten times give you what? One sixty. Right, one hundred and sixty thousand. So right. the banks get that, right? Based off your birth certificate, and they estimate that if you were to be sixty-five years old, you would have made at least a million dollars in your lifetime. Mm-hmm. So. That one point, that 160 million is now fractionalized by the bank, all right, to become now 1.6 million dollars. And that's at birth. When you mature at 18, you go to the hundreds of millions of dollars, even billions. So hold up, they gonna have to pay us that back? That that coming back to us? That that's coming back to us. Well, that's supposed well, to be able to allow for you to tap in in order to discharge your debts. You're not supposed right. to be paying no taxes, and no debts. Yes. Mm, right. Okay. I'm trying to figure out. You know, so when we tap into that, we I could like well, we tap into that, tap into that those funds at will. Yes, so it, it, it yes, enables you, you to discharge yes, you debt. You in order to discharge debt, right? Exactly. Okay. Wow. Definitely got to work on this one, man. Because I want to get. I'm tired of working. I want to do do my research. I want to get involved with trying to, you know, get funky with it. Right. Right. We, it's, it's time. You know, I'm, I'm tired. Of, you know, faking the funk, working around these folks, and playing a role like everything cool with it. You know. We're learning a lot of things right now, and this this, this is ridiculous. Yes, it is. Right. You know, the, the stronger the information, the, the more, you know, we want to break free of this and, and, and move forward. But, you right. know, and you're getting stronger. You're getting stronger. We already, you know, I'm, I'm at to the point where, you know, I know, you know, we forever. We we growing stronger and stronger. And this is just a little bit stop. you just seeing things, you know, for what they are, but at the same time. It's, it's sad that you know so many people are still caught up in the, in the, in the mix. 
know, I'm, I'm trying right. to do my part with the breathing exercise and, you know, getting involved with the information, you know, doing the meditations and such. But, you know, this, it's, it's, you know, this it's Jesus spell really put a toll. It took a toll on a, a lot of folks, no man. Mm-hmm. People, people stuck. Mm-hmm. And you can't, you know, try to talk to folks. <laughs> It's 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 that and the logic is real. Sh- is it's shot. Exactly. Right. Right. Self-right. See the thing yeah. is that everything is based on you being a commodity, and based on the contract in which that was signed by your mother on the um, birth certificate. You would see your mother under her name is called informant. So she really mm-hmm. snitched on. Her. All right. And so what happened is that she signed you over as being a ward to the state at birth. That's what she did. Mm-hmm. That's what she did the birth certificate. All right, so the state said, look, um, he's going to make this amount of money on average if he works. All right, so mm-hmm. you work some odd years of your life. By 65, you want to retire. That ain't no damn life, yo. No, <laughs> exactly. You know, so it's, it's, this is what it's ridiculous, man. Right. right, but that's what they want. They want you to be able to work for years. Get distracted. More, I can't. You know, yeah. To be distracted. You're right to be distracted um, from everything which that is going on in the world, and the only thing you're doing is going to make their money during the process. So you still be in their so-called industry corporations, um, and you know what are you getting from it? Except crumbs in order to just to check the check. Hmm. Uh-huh. Exactly. That's exactly how it is. So. Right. Yeah, things gonna change though. Right. This is a more. Oh yeah. This is it right here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's what that's what you, you, you information. Yeah, you're gonna hear from me pretty soon, man. But, um, I'm catching up okay. with you soon. And hopefully, you know okay. I can see more and get more involved with you know, all the info and try to spread right. as much as I could and just be a be a little, you know, I guess uh example right. of how how things you know, move forward. All right. On a more positive positive movement. Right. I appreciate all y'all, y'all your information, bro. All Thanks right. a lot. Right. Appreciate you. It's, it's yeah. Yeah. So much appreciate. All right, bro. Appreciate you, God. Right. Yep. All right, we have area code seven four zero. Area code seven four zero. You on the line? Peace and blessings, brother. How's everybody? Oh, great, bro. Right. Peace, 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 peace. Peace. All right. Uh, there was something that you mentioned earlier about the uh, the white supremacy. Uh, right. The the question I have is is that the infrastructure and the system that the white supremacy have here, which uh, uh, put put in place and has put in place oppression, uh, you know. Uh, control and different things of that nature. What powers do we have as a people that will offset the white supremacy and the things that they set up to keep us oppressed? Or is that a power, a power that's greater than us that will show up on the scene and deal with that white supremacy that has been suppressing us for over the past 400 years uh, right. Second The second part question is And I'll make it fast In terms of the The slavery that we Deal with here What is the difference between uh, It now And also Back in, in the slavery That was in Central America and South America And the slavery that That, that was around the world all right. Well, the slavery in which that took place in South America, Central America, the adjoining islands, as well as also um, around the world, as Africans was imported and exported out of Africa, um, we see that even with tribal wars in Africa, um, when they was practicing what was called um, these so-called tribal wars, yeah. there was no suppression of the language. There was no suppression of the individual 
Matter of fact, the individual within another tribe actually could become the chief of the tribe if he deemed worthy enough and was intelligent enough and wise enough. Mm-hmm. There was nothing in which that helped them back. You know what I'm saying? In other words, okay. the wars or the tribal wars was based on suppression of talent or the suppression of speech or the suppression of one's thoughts and one's ideology or philosophy. That always encouraged amongst all Africans. Okay? Um, okay. So that is the difference between what is going on now. As we broke down with Black Wall Street, as we begin to flourish economically, that to be destroyed. But yet at the same time, um, patterns, you know, in which that we made John Standard, who actually was a brother um, who made the refrigerator, he died broke. George mm-hmm. Washington Carver, who developed the peanut, um, made rubber, made soybeans, um, um, mm-hmm. um, milk, and um, rice milk, and, and all these things in which they're they using now in the so-called whole food store, peanut butter and everything, um, this man died broke. Mm-hmm. Um, we look at Granville T. Woods who produced the rate, the um, telephone apparatus, which is the telephone in which that we're using now, all right, um, in which that soon developed into um, another brother took that and became incarnated with the telephone information. And his name was um, Henry Sampson, all right? Sampson, um, I have to be making some money now, but Granville T. Woods died broke. Hmm. All right. Lewis Lattimore produced the lighting system. Mm-hmm. Okay. The carbon filaments okay. worked better. Con Edison, as he's called, up north in um, in New York. Right to Lewis Lattimore, and Lewis, Lattimore, as well as Grand T. Woods, on in order to. Um, get their um, their patent, but guess what? In the end, the more as Granville T. Woods. So there was a lot of stealing going on um, right mm-hmm. after he was making all these inventions right after the construction era, the um, industrial age. I said earlier, we needed people to come and work for us. So we had to end slavery in the South in order to bring them up into the North to begin to because those who was free were showing such progress and such intelligence that they knew that they had to continue using us in some shape, form, or fashion that they just could not allow for us to go free and do our own thing. They did not want to give us the five states in which that um was warranted, and what was mentioned out of the 13 um, section, Article 13, Section 20 of the of the um, of the Constitution, when they talk about the 13th Amendment, where it stated that um, Lincoln was going to actually give us five states mm-hmm. that we was going to be able to southern states, in which that we would have been able to um, continue doing what we wanted to do as far as being able to capitalize off our own intelligence and intellectual property. That did not happen. So, as you might have heard about Sherman, um, with him in South Carolina talking about 40 acres in the mule, we mm-hmm. see that did not happen for the mass majority of the people. All right? So, we understand that we are being oppressed. We understand that the same thing took place in the islands, but because of the terrain in the islands, you had the melanated people who was able to get away and do a lot of the sneak attacks in order to gain their freedom, just like the Haitians who mixed in the magic, all right, of the Vudan ancestry or the Yoruba ancestry or the Congo Palo Mayombe or Palo rights. They took all that information, you know, which that they gathered, and 
used magic, which is power of the mind, actually, in order to defeat the European. The witch doctors was always, the so-called witch doctors or the herbalists or um, the masterminds of the village along with the chiefs, they was all consulted. The chief was not just the only one consulted, but the witch doctors were consulted also. If they would go to war or not, if you look at the Mau Mau in Kenya, the Mau Mau in Kenya, they always, the um those brothers and sisters in Kenya, went to the witch doctor in order to find out, or the shaman, to find out if it was the right time to attack. All right? These these shamans was able to look into the very timelines in order to tell them if it was real or not, if it was the right time or not. All right? So this is what we can get back to. All right? Um, this is what we have to understand. All right? So... That's that's my um, answer for that. Hopefully, I answered it. If not, you know, um remind me of what what you need to go deeper into. Okay, you know, just so so what you so what you're saying is there's not going to be a similar situation that what what happened when uh, Moses and, and the Most High used Moses to free the people. Well, because I understand when, what you're saying. Yes. Yeah, yes. when I when I Let look at explain. when I, I guess when you. I look at that I situation, you. I look at I mm-hmm. look at the same similar patterns right now and I look at the prophecies and utterances of Bob Marley, right. mm-hmm. how he talked about he had a song called Four Hundred, a C D called Exodus. Right. So when I when I look at all of the uh the parallels and even down to the 144,000, when I look at it, I go back to the the Egyptian and Hebrew calendar, they were 12 years at 30 days. Now, if you look right. at our calendar, it's 12 years and 31 years, 20, you know, 30 years, which offsets it and gives us 365. Now, when you if, you, if we go back and look at 12 years, 30 days, it comes out to 360 days a year. Now, if we take 360, as I heard the brother say, we've been in captivity for 400 years. If you take 360 and times it times 400, it's 144,000. So right. being in the Bible, could they have misrepresented in part the 144,000? They said, well, there's going to come a time where the people that we have oppressed, they're going to have, something's going to happen to where, they're going to be free. So when they right. wake up spiritually, let's not call them the 400-year slaves. Let's call them uh, the 144,000, and let's purposely change these dates up and call it 365 instead of 360. You see what I'm saying, brother? So right. I see Revelation and Exodus and things like that, and you look at the captivities when they were in Syria, the captivities when they were... In Egypt, the captivities in Babylon, all those have a similarity to us right now. I'm like, ooh, could we be those people? Right. Now, let let, let me explain that. Um, yes, we are those people. Um, there's no doubt about it. Um, prophecies has already been made as far as um, if you get the tape, um, it's called Africa's in Asia, in which okay. that... Um, you see the prophecies in which that is made on that tape um, by the Cambodian people, in which that states that there will be a people who will become imprisoned in the 50 cities, which is hence the 50 states, in which that eventually they will free themselves from the oppression. And this was prophesied hundreds and thousands of years ago. All right? Um, yes. And as a um, matter of fact, um, they built the 50 cities, all right, um, there within Cambodia. And so when you go and do the research, you will find out we were the people in which they're talking about. The Bible also speaks about 400 years or 400 and, you know, 400, 430 years so um, of the Israelites being um, 
in prison or, you know, in yeah, a sense, as we would say. That's in Genesis, in, in Genesis 15, 13. Genesis, right. It says, 15, 13, it says for, exactly. yeah, it said for 400. Now, th- this is where the church is really, really throw us off good. Right. Anytime right. the, the, the 400 is related, it's related to Moses in time. It's not. Right. Because if you go back no, it's to not. Genesis 37, when, right. when, 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 when Jacob and his sons came in, they came in and they had favor with the Pharaoh. So the Pharaoh gave right. them fine property, which was Goshen. And as time right. went on, they were they they began to be oppressed. They was there mm-hmm. for a total of four thirty, but they were only oppressed for about maybe two hundred and ten years. Now, when you exactly. look at Genesis fifteen, Genesis fifteen says, "Abraham know of surety that right. thy seed will be a stranger in a land." The, in the land the, which is Jacob, not big. Was not right. there. Now mm-hmm. Jacob them. We're not strangers in the land of Egypt. Right. You know, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. uh, a, a lot of the modern-day theology has taken that Genesis 15. Now, this is what they don't say, and this is how they've thrown us off. If you look at that chapter 15 of Genesis, that's a timeline because when it first starts off, Abraham says, man, I ain't you tell you with the most high. He says, I don't have any children. Who shall my inheritance go to? And then he goes on to give them a full, you're going to have somebody. They're going to be as many as the stars. And then there's a sacrifice that's come in. And coming to the tail end of the timeline, there's this big captivity. But, it, but this is the wonderful thing about it. It says, and those people that have been in captivity, they will come out with great substance. Now, I was great thinking, substance. If, if I was an oppressor and I know what's about to mm-hmm. happen, I would do everything in my right. ability to keep people deceived, bamboozled, exactly. confused, right. distracted, and everything right. so that these people won't know that they're getting ready to have great substance, come to freedom, and uh, not be oppressed no more. Right, and that's true. And how is that going to be accomplished? Some speak about divine intuition, um, divine into um, what do they call it, divine, um, what do they call it, um, not intuition, but divine um, leadership, as we would say. That something from mm-hmm. outside of us, maybe mm-hmm. possibly a UFO or mothership, will come in order to help with. Um, this, of course, you know, most refer to it as New Biddle, um, in yeah. which that now is being said to be seen in the skies. Um, some say that it's Sirius C, in which that is being seen, in which that comes in a elliptical pattern with the Earth every 3,600 years. Um, right. It's called the planet of the crossing. Others say, well, like for myself, that, well, first, in order to even be recognized by the so-called external ship, you must first reach the ship within yourself, which is actually a galaxy-like cloud that looks like a UFO and which that hovers over top of your pineal gland so that when you raise the Kundalini to the pineal, the pineal will shoot up, like beam me up Scotty, into mm-hmm. um, that particular um, sphere of consciousness, and you would now be able to commune with the ship is which is outside or external of yourself because once again, as above, so below, as within, so without. So now they can see you because you resonating at that frequency. Okay. However, yes. Uh, without the resurrection of the Kundalini, they can't see you. All right. You're mm. not important to them. You're mundane. Mm-hmm. You like um, it's like um, a cesspool or muck in the mire type of thing. So, um, you have to become the mediumship, resurrecting the life force within you to become activated and to be seen by the exactly. so-called galactic confederation. Mm-hmm. And then things will begin to start changing. And then, of course, that ship which is outside, for those who resurrect themselves, will to guide that ship in order to do what they want and what they need to do. 
All right? And that's the key. So all this is still predicated upon our resurrection. Not waiting for the resurrection of Jesus, but on the resurrection of Yahshua, which is through the breath of life, in which that resurrects us from the lower self to the higher self. That's the real resurrection. So this is what must happen and take place so that we can actually um, gain access um, not to just um, our higher selves, but also to um, some type of understanding and I guess you can say, for lack of a better word, um, control of this planet. Exactly. Exactly. Well, well, well you know, they, they, they've, uh, they've had a slow a slow conditioning of us. Uh, right. so if you notice, over the past five years, they've been showing a lot of alien invasion movies, uh, right. eight, you know, you mm. motherships, right. UFOs. You know, if you look at Conan O'Brien in, the, in his backdrop in this late night, he's, he's got a large moon right there. So they have slowly been uh, conditioning us for something that's about to come. Now, right. it, it all kind of ties in, in, into this. You know, the white supremacy have a way of telling us but not telling us. And right. there was a group that was called the Fifth Dimension. Mm-hmm. And they had a song yeah. called The Age of Aquarius. Now, mm-hmm. okay, Aquarius. Well, Hollywood about that all doesn't the time, allow, right. right, they doesn't allow nothing to come out unless they give the okay. Now, right. my, the sanction. my question, yeah, there's a sanction. Why did they allow a black group to sing The Age of Aquarius and in 1969. In 1969. Yeah, right. Exactly. Now, right. here we are. We 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 just come into the cusp of Aquarius. Uh, right. Enlightenment has happened, exactly. and we're moving mm-hmm. into the fifth dimension. If you go to the right. Bible, the Bible says that we will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. The Bible also right. says new heaven and that new earth. That new right. heaven and a new earth. It also says that in the in the days that Jacob will wake back up and watch this. They they talked to us in numbers too. There was last year a movie that came out that was called Forty Two with Jackie Robinson. Mm-hmm. Now if you go right. to the Isaiah the chapter forty two Yes, mm-hmm. James Brown. Isaiah chapter forty two says this. If you go to Genesis chapter 42 and Isaiah chapter 42, Genesis chapter 42 is a reuniting of Jacob back together. All his children, right. 12 tribes. If you go to Isaiah right. chapter right. 42, it is a mm-hmm. reuniting of Jacob back together. So I'm saying, was white folks, was white supremacy sending out a cold message to all those who have ears to hear to say, listen, people, we are getting ready to go into a captivity that these people have been in, but they're coming out. Exactly. Right. Well, and see, also that correlates to, um, even though we talk about how the CIA, you know, Dick Gray speak about how the CIA um, wrote the so-called uh, Willie Lynch speech, but the Willie Lynch speech was supposed to have been written in 1712, and then it speaks yes. about a 400-year um, captivity in which that, of course, would have ended 2012. And then you had the Mayan calendar in which that, um, you know, December the 21st, 2012, um, yes. supposed to have been that season or the beginning of that season. So all these things like you're talking about is correlating. So, yes, this is the season of the awakening. But this is why um, we also have another group in which that is attempting to suppress that by producing the chemtrails, the GMO food. Um, the heart yes, system and various yes. other um, things in order to attempt to stop the, um, the changing of the 12 strands of DNA. The junk DNA is supposed to be awakening right now. Um, we have two strands in the junk DNA, which is the remaining 10 strands, supposed to be, um, you know, coming together in order to produce the 12 strands, 12 physical strands. And then, of course, you have the 12 Ethereum strands, giving us the so-called 24 elders or the 24 strands with the activation of the 12 pair of cranial nerves, which is 24 also. So we see all of this taking place, and so they're trying their best to stop it. So this is why we was talking about 
um, the foods um, is part of that. We talk about the martial arts, of course, the internal power techniques, the breathing exercises, all of these things have to be done in order to um, wage the war, the great Armageddon or the great Jihad against all these non, you know, all this nonsense in which that is taking place right now, brother. So I definitely agree with yeah. you. I appreciate you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. You know, we're 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 all on the same path, and I'm and I'm so thankful. You know, it, when when you said that word correlation, I I thought of this. I said, you know, if 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 black people take pencil beans and put our flavor on it, it's called you know beans and rice, you know, or red beans and rice. If you took the Hispanics and they took those same beans, you know, they have a different name, but it's still that that pinto bean, right? If you took white folks, they may take that same bean and have a different part to it. But guess what? It's still a bean, man. And, 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 and the things that I'm hearing coming from you, the things that I'm hearing coming from a person across the way, because I'm a truck driver. And I'm seeing right. how people are starting to change in such a way where they're saying, you know what, uh, I've been asleep a long time. And I say, you know what, I've been asleep too. And then and then you may hear it over, over here, and it's like, wow, people really are waking up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. It's the age of Aquarius. Yes. Yep. Now, can someone explain... Uh, what what Aquarius means when we train, change from one house to the other? Right. Well, um, there's 12 zodiac signs. We have a new one coming in, which is the 13th zodiac called Officius, which is actually Imhotep, in which that is called the Serpent Wrestler, in which that now is actually moving the calendar dates from 12. Um, months and 30 to 31 days to actually 13 months and 28 days. Mm-hmm. Um, but normally we have the 12 zodiac signs, the constellations, in which that, of course, is predicated on Aries, which is actually Amen, or Amen Ra, which is the ram, Taurus, which is actually Apis, which is actually the calf or the bull, um, Gemini, which is also a set or Set and or Saw, or Heru, as it becomes known later on in the Egyptian mythology. Then you have um, Cancer, which is Kepara, which is the dung beetle. Um, then you have um, Leo, which is Atum, or Atum Ray, or Atum Ra, uh, which is the lion, and the lioness. The female component would be um, Sekhmat, all right, which is the lioness. And then, of course, you have Virgo, which is the Virgin, which is um, Mary, as we know, within the um, Catholic um, Catholicism, um, but is actually um, a form of um, our set uh, once again. And then, of course, you have Libra, which is the balancing of the scales, which is actually Mayat. Um, and then, of course, you have Scorpio, which is um, Sarket, which is um, the Scorpion King. All right, which that you see The Rock or Dwayne Johnson um, did the movie on. Um, yeah. And then, of course, you have Officius, in which that comes between Scorpio and Sagittarius, in which that, like I said, is Imhotep. But then you have Sagittarius, which is the um, which is actually um, Shu. Shu was also the archer or he who stands outright, which is symbolic to um, Sagittarius. Then, of course, you have um, Capricorn, which is the gold of Mendez, which become the Baphomet symbol later on um, within um, by um, Elias um, Levi, or Elias Levi, all right? Then, of course, you have Aquarius, which is actually the age of Heru, which is the age mm-hmm. of truth or the age of knowing, which yeah. that we have gone into one of these. And then, of course, you have Pisces, which is Sebek, which is the crocodile deity, in which that becomes the fish later on. Each one of these particular constellations actually in a great year, which is equivalent to 25,928 years, is broken down into 2,168 years. So it takes the sun to go through each one of these signs 2,160 years. And now we have entered into the age of Aquarius, in which that 
um, we announced two 2,160-year cycle, um, and we actually have gone through a whole 25,928-year cycle, and now have come within the age of Heru, which is the age of knowing, the age of um, the age of truth. So this is the reason why everybody is waking up is because of the age in which they're being is being able to um, when you see Aquarius, you see him pour forth water. That water is symbolic to um, truth. That water is symbolic to knowledge. That water is symbolic to emotions or energy and emotion. So that's the key to what is really taking place right now on the planet. Um, and this is the reason why in 1969 it was some of the age of Aquarius is because it was symbolic to the age of truth and that mm-hmm. we must know. You know exactly. We must develop into a knowingness of what is taking place. So that's what's going on. The, the, you the, said the age of Aquarius came in in 1969? Yes. Yeah. Well, that's when the okay. song came out was in 1969. Um, we know... Dr. York speaks about the fact of 1970 to 2000 that he will have 30 years in order to prepare us in which that he spoke about from that time period. Um, obviously, he might have been, you know, um, you know, uh, influenced by that song in 1969. As a matter of fact, based on all reports, that song was the most popular song around the world in 1969. Yeah, so, that's no coincidence. Um, that that had to you know be the song in which that uh, was the most popular, and then of course through that you know comes the awakening, you know. So like you said, us going into the fifth dimension, they could have said the fourth dimension, you know, they could have said the sixth dimension or whatever, but they chose the fifth dimension is because they were studying at the time um, the yoga teachings of probably um, Yogananda and different other yogis who came here in the 1960s. Mm, okay. Uh, okay. So you 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 did you guys uh I think did, did you find it ironic that the movie Independence Day they chose Will Smith to be up in the spacecraft? Exactly. And then also they chose Will Smith to be, and you know he had, he had one movie called I Am Legend that he was right. a survivor. Right. Yeah. You know, and then he he just had a recent movie. Called uh, something about Earth with the Sun, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, and, and I, I look, I look at the movies that he's actually been in over the past what maybe ten, twelve years. How it's been related to, uh, you know, he was in the M- MIB, Alien, uh, Independence Day, and I'm saying, and I'm asking a question. Are they right. in remember, direct way? Uh, remember, he's a Scientologist. Remember, okay. he's a Scientologist. So, yes, they, you know, they believe in, um, in all of that, too. So that's why he picked his roles very carefully. But one role in which that he regrets is actually being Neo in the Matrix, in which that he got um, tapped for, but he did not do. Okay. And that was his biggest mistake, actually. Yeah. Oh, so he wish you would have did that. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I think I think it was a black woman that actually wrote it, wrote it, but it was Sophia stolen Stewart. from her. Right, Sophia Stewart. Right, exactly. Yeah. There's there's a lot of things out there, you know. I mean, I I think I've made mention of this before, but. At a certain time every day, they spray these chemtrails at a certain angle right? Uh, in, in the day. And I don't know if anybody have, have been really noticing this, man, but the sun, not, not the sun, but the moon is getting larger. Right. It looks like it's coming close to Earth. Now, if you right. look at the backdrop it's of been Conan. Doing that, it's, been doing it's, that, right, it's been doing that for the last four or five years. So, yes. Exactly. And, and, I'm, mm-hmm. and, and when, when I'm out, I, I tell people, don't you guys see what's going on? Why isn't the news, the newspaper talking about this? And the first thing they right. say, well, oh, man, you're crazy, man. You're crazy. You know, what, you know give me right. some of that of what you've been smoking. I say, no, really, right. man. Look at the moon. You know, right. it's getting closer. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, some people say that the moon actually is an artificial satellite, being an artificial as that is a shit. 
A um, ship? Yeah, they say that it's a ship. Um, so, uh, matter of fact, um, this is what has been speculated. A uh, ship. Yeah, there, there, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, there are some satellites that you think they are stars, but they are satellites. Uh, uh, if, if, you did, if it shows a little bit too big, that's the satellite. If you know how to right. they make sometimes they it make, flickers sometimes. Uh, right, they uh, make they make right. Go ahead, go ahead. No, I was going to say that based on all the measurements, they say that the moon is too large to be a moon for the planet Earth. Mm-hmm. All right, so. There's a lot of okay. things going on. And recently, they just had um, aliens on the moon. This actually was on the Sci-Fi channel just two weeks, two, three weeks ago. In which that on this um, TV show, you can actually look it up online, Aliens on the Moon, they showed that there was a, um, a black woman, you know, with locks. A black woman with locks on the moon, and she was guiding the ship from her third eye. She was guiding the ship. Now, it's funny yep. you said that, brother, because Will Smith's done a movie called Hancock, and right. just before it went off, he flew up to the moon and sat mm-hmm. on the moon. Right. right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So that's exactly what's going on, bro. Mm-hmm. Um, hold on. I want you going. We're going we're gonna to bring on... Um, other callers here. I'm going to go to 410 on the line and also 302 you on the line. Come on in. Peace. 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 Which area code you calling from? Just the 410. Okay. Okay, 410. Okay, and the 302? Yes. All right, right, there we go. All right. We're gonna have a little panel discussion since I'm gonna bring um bring y'all on too. Um y'all got any questions that y'all wanna go into or any comments? Yes, I do. Three zero two. All right, go ahead. Um first was just where can I find the archives to hear today's show? I came in a little late. Um, um you can go to um Eileen Bay. Aleem L. Bay on Block Talk Radio, and it should pull up. You can go to the archive and download it. Okay. Um, also, within that, I was trying to get links for the for the sovereignty and naturalization papers. Um, okay, you can go to my website, www.alimelbay.com. That's D R A L I M E L B E Y www.drlimelbay.com and you can go to the website to United Washita History and also United Washita Process Reclamation Process. Okay. Oh. Um, I had a couple more, but I'm you know willing yeah, to. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. It's all right. Go ahead. We, we got we um, got um thirty we got um thirty. Thirty-six more minutes, almost forty more minutes. Oh, so, okay. we got, yeah, we got time for right. questions. Go ahead. I was, um, I had signed up a while ago in D.C. at the um, mm-hmm. Moore Science Temple. I uh, didn't get my card uh, mm-hmm. that day, but end up, you know, things I have not didn't get it. Period. But planning to go back. Um, I have. I basically want to know those things so I can get, you know, get busy. Just been looking right. at... Right. Um, well, you know the Moore yeah. Science Temple, they don't teach the UCC process. The only thing no. they teach is religious philosophy and possibly some information about nationality, which it don't seem like yeah. they understand fully. And I'm right. just talking yeah, about most is, of them. Yeah. It's not every one of them. That's not every one of them. So I want to make that clear. But um, some... Most of them are in there, and they have it as a church, and they're doing a whole lot of hollering, um, right. just like they do in the church. Exactly. And um, Brother L can tell you about that because he was a member of the Moore Science Temple for quite some time. Mm-hmm. Um, and Brother L, you want to speak on that right quick? 
<laughs> yes. Uh, the, the reason why you get that, brother, is because uh, the most of them, I say maybe about maybe eighty to eighty-five percent of them have been compromised. Okay. And uh, they, they, you know, they like I said, they speak of nationality and birthright, but they don't actually teach it. Uh, you go in there, you hear uh, more of uh, a song. It sounds has uh, Muslim names to the gospels that they sing. You know, they have gospelized, as you say, uh, 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 a lot of the more science temples. Uh, they, like, I can give you an example. They can say, way down the water, way down the water, Muslims, you know. Oh. But that's a, actually that's a Christian song. Yeah. You see, you see, my, you heard it, haven't you? Yes. <laughs> okay, that's what we're talking about. Uh, oh. they, they, they've been compromised. Uh, they don't teach, like you said, they don't teach the UCCs. Uh, they don't teach nationality and birthright, not really. Uh, they right, they don't teach the executive. Um, right, they don't teach the executive letter or the executors or um, executress office. They do not teach trust. They do not no. teach um, unincorporation. They do not no. teach yeah. these particular things in which that the people need to know in order to uh, free themselves. And like the brother said, they are compromised because this is the reason why they're not being taught so that the people can't get the highest form of information. So they um, like to blast myself, Brother L, um, Hakeem Bay, um, Taj, Tariq Bay, and many others, you know, for teaching this information. But this is necessary um, to teach because people have to yeah. study and learn, all right? This is just like a school. How are you going to say that I can't study one aspect of, of, um, of freedom or of liberation, but yet I got to study what you want me to study, and then you're not giving it to me, and you're not teaching me anything in which that actually is going to liberate or free me? Mm-hmm. You know? Well, yeah. I'm, I don't want I'm them to see it. The UCC is everything that there is because it isn't. But it gives you the ability in order to go into commerce in order to operate in commerce um, as a so-called free man or free woman. Mm -hmm. And you do that because uh, when you do your um, security party creditor um, section, you do it under your indigenous appellation name, which exactly. you do not have a certificate tied to it. So, therefore, you are operating now in commerce um, without a bond or bondage attached to you. You're not in bondage. So, therefore, you're operating in commerce as a free man or free woman as compared to those um, who did not do a nationality or a um, claim of lien after mm -hmm. David on their name or whatever the case is. They're still operating in the fiction um, or, in, or as the straw person or straw man or straw woman. And therefore, that's to their detriment. Mm -hmm. All right? Like, for example, yeah. the Europeans, um, you can't be Jack Johnson and then be Jack Johnson um, in the debtor box and be Jack Johnson in the um, security agreement box, regardless if you transform it into a lower case, regardless. Because based on Edom um, Sonam, um, and Edom Sonam, is, it means that it, um, it sounds the same. So, therefore, right. Jack Johnson... Regardless of his upper low case, is Jack Johnson upper case too? Yeah. So they don't mm -hmm. make a distinction between Jack Johnson and you can't in in a real law you can't be the grantor and the grantee at the same time. Right. Mm -hmm. So you have to make it appear that it is. So Jack Johnson now must become Mustafa El Bay or Mustafa Alamin Bay. Mm -hmm. And Mustafa Alamin Bay don't have a birth certificate like Jack Johnson. So now he can do the Jack Johnson punch out technique. Um, you know. And um, in commerce, you know, without, you know, the detriment of being uh, caught up, as we would say, right. being, being identified as that straw person and that straw man. Right. But that's why it's best to make sure you get your nationality and birthright first before you deal with the UCCs. Right. The executive letter, you know. Right. Nationality is still the call of the day. Yeah. Yeah. I just had one more, and that was, I'll, 
through the divine intervention, I've been led to study the sedge and the bee in hieroglyphs. Right. Um, and I wanted to know if you had any thoughts on that, um, that I could, you know, just learn more. Oh, yeah, there's a good book written by Dr. Muata Ashby on the um, Metuneta. Um, matter of fact, it's called The Beginning of the Egyptian Language. Um, I believe that's the name of something like that or the Metuneta. So um, you can get that book by Dr. Muata Ashby, and he give you a good, um, it's probably about maybe 200 some odd pages of how to speak the Metuneta, how to speak, um, you know, um, or as they say, identify or symbolize the hieroglyphics. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the wealth of information. I really appreciate you. And then we'll go to area code 302. Area code 302, you on the line, brother? I, I was 302. Peace. Okay, you was Peace. 302. Okay, well, let me get to 410. Area code 410 yeah. on the line. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, hold on. Hold on. I'm going to bring in area code 803. Area code 803, we're going to bring you yeah, to the discussion yeah. also. But we're going to go first with 410. Go ahead, 410. What's your question? Is is two four one zeros? Yep, four one zero. No, I thought it was somebody else calling from uh, St. Mary. Uh, oh no, four one zero, you're on the line. Yeah, brother. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I appreciate the dissemination of information you uh, you religiously give out. Uh, you probably remember me. Um, I, I almost, I, I dare to say, I made history on your radio show from first brother calling from from uh, from uh, behind incarceration. I was a brother Jerome Butler. They called um, probably six months ago, seven, eight months ago. Remember? I think I um, remember you. Yeah, I, I was. I called. Um, from Baltimore, Maryland, or you know, the territory of Maryland. And uh right. I spoke with yeah, yeah, um yeah, I met my mother, she um she was the one doing the the transformation. I mean uh you know, doing the right, emails right. and everything. Well, yeah, yeah. Right. So, so, so yeah, uh it's good hearing with you from the outside. Um I I've been out for a while but um she Yeah, um, appreciate you lot. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah, but um, she, 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 was, <laughs> uh, How's yeah. Doing? How's um, everybody doing? Oh man, yeah. I mean, she, you know, the um, it's more uh, equanimous now because before it, it was a lot of stress. It was a stressful situation, you know. So, so it was right. nothing. Well, your voice, your voice, your voice has changed too. So I know, yeah, you got less stress. I hear it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. I, she, Man, and uh, you know, it was nothing personal against your, your queen. You know, uh, my mother, she just wanted to, she wanted to say, um, it, things were a little stressed out at the time. So if, if it was a little stress across the email, you know, it was nothing personal on her side. Okay. Um, I got you. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so peace to your queen too. She in the background. So, so um. So oh, yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> Oh, uh, peace, peace. This, this the uh, brother, brother, brother Jerome Butler. Um, that was calling from that uh, the institution they got in Maryland. But right. Dr. Eileen B, Dr. Eileen B, I wanted to talk about the um, uh, what better uh, auspicious time to talk about the the, the sovereignty and everything. Uh, right. And the story, man. Um, I, mean, I guess I could write a book on it, but I just you know for the Sega Radio Show. Um, I'm trying to put a lean, a lean on that judge uh, Mimi Cooper. I'm, I'm trying to put a shoulder lean on her, man. But right, she, um, you know, I gotta get everything, get get all my duck pens lined up, like Brother L right. said before. Well, you know I how you do that. a lean. How you do a lean is that you have to um, put her name, and um, if she's a um, formerly a lawyer, you can put her bar. Um, Number on to a UCC um, three. Okay, good, 
because it, it seems so hard to get the information. Like, right, and, I, I don't and, even and know she what. Be, and, she and she won't be able to use her credit. Yeah. she really be um, freak out then because that's the same thing in which that the IRS does to any one of us is when they place a lien on us, they do it through a UCC-1 or UCC-3. So you can do the exact same thing to that judge. Now, do I recommend that? Not necessarily. I Uh-oh. first would actually write up a complaint and send it to the Bar Association and a complaint based to the Judicial Committee. And based on what they do or say, then that would be my um, last result or alternative. Oh, so you don't recommend just going right at the juggler? No, not not first. Make make sure you get All right. have a paper trail. That way you can say, look, I tried this, it didn't. Um, y'all didn't do shit, so I had to get them. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I, okay, that make that make more uh, that make more sense. Cause I All right. I wanted to, some of the shock value too, cause she kind of had this um. Oh, you. Yeah. Oh, I know. You know the smoke. Uh huh. Right. But but you <laughs> want to be able to have at least a um. You want to at least have you know some type of um paper trail that you can say, look, I tried it this way, but they didn't reply. There was no real fly. Now you can also sue a judge too nowadays, um, based uh, on the etiquette we can see from the um from the Pope, um recently, uh-huh. um stated specifically that you can um sue. Officers of the court So basically you can actually write up A civil suit for the violations Of your civil rights um, Using title 42 And title 18 for the criminal Offenses of what she did to you And put it into The civil um, at the federal level At the civil um, um, At the civil um, Filing section of the, of the federal court Yeah cause I'm about to say You know point of going in these backyard courts You know these State courts in, no, no, in my no, backyard. No, no, you have, you have to go. No, you have to go straight to the federal. That's where you can sue her ass at. <laughs> yeah, man. She, you already know that. Um, I'm sure you got more than thirty belts in the in the courtroom. Um, oh yeah, she, I but do. she. <laughs> and twenty nine, um, and twenty nine, I won. Yeah, that's that's mm-hmm. um, that's a, a a strong record. Um. No, my wife is even yeah. stronger. She won all thirty. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, because um, I, I was in a in a room. It was a full studio audience, and usually they call my name last. You know. Right. But this, this time I was up first, and right. you know I I kept my my decorum. I kept it somewhat political. You know, you gotta you gotta mm-hmm. play like the Romans when you're in the, the Colosseum. And um, exactly. I, um, I, you know, I was asked a couple questions, just some some questions. You know, I I know, so I asked a couple right. questions, and I just kept on asking them. And but I, I see the fatal mistake I made. Um, mm-hmm. I think I, they they catching on with it. They they catch some traction with with my strategy. Those questions. Right. You know, it to ig- there's a book in which has been passed around to the judges on how to deal with the Moors and deal with so-called mm-hmm. sovereign citizens. Right. Yep. Yeah, and I got asked, are you a sovereign citizen? I say, um, right. with all due respect. And you say, hell no, uh, I'm indigenous to this landmass. I'm an original inhabitant. <laughs> right. I am a, yeah, I am uh, the real Native American. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm sorry, that's an oxymoron. What is a sovereign citizen? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't know. But, um, yeah, so inside of the, um, inside the place, uh, you know how that, you, what is his nationality? What is the nationality? I don't know your name. You know, uh, I'm, I'm presented. You know, uh, but what is, uh, what is your? Uh, who gave you uh, the right to practice law in my land? Things of that like that. Okay, got you. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, so I went in the, inside the. Uh, Inside the warehouse, and you know how on a computer you, you can always talk to somebody to talk a trash and everything. Um, you, you know the people that you never get a chance to meet flesh to flesh. So, so I actually got to meet a real live racist. Like, like we we actually had some some conversation, and um, um, European racist, and um, 
he he wasn't it wasn't like your, your average YouTube debate you know keyboard warrior. It, he he was actually explaining from his um, his side of the story how I mean there's no secret but it's like they raised of course they they uh, they propagated from from posterity to posterity. They just following what they know the program you know even though it might be um he said he got General Lee blood inside of him you know the um. <laughs> Instead of general, civil, yeah, Senate, civil war. Uh, general, um, I forgot the name, but yeah, consider General Robert E. Lee. Yeah, yeah he said he has blood, <laughs> and um, <laughs> <laughs> well, so Robert Lee wasn't a sovereign, so okay, <laughs> right. And um, um, it, it's interesting. I was I was reading the sixteen. What is it? Um, sixteen crucified saviors. The the Bible unearthing it. Um. Uh, I, I was reading all type of books in there, but isn't it interesting? Isn't it interesting? As soon as I started picking up some Moorish literature, he was like, "Hey man, put that stuff down. You know that stuff. You know <laughs> um, why you why you got to read that stuff all the time?" And um, so I, I was like, um, "You know, I'm just uh, you know educating myself for my civic duty." And he uh it was some some interesting questions I, I didn't quite know how to answer it back then but um, right but, but hold on he, so so when he started picking up the Morris literature he started saying why are you picking that up all of a sudden he was concerned about why why are you reading that <laughs> yeah it, it it was like um and and, and listen to the dissociative <laughs> uh this uh disassociative language why are you picking up that mm-hmm. stuff? You know, <laughs> right. mm-hmm. the, that over there. When I was when I was reading all that other stuff, the crucified saviors and and um, I was what else? I was, a whole bunch of other stuff. But as soon as it got to the Moorish literature, it was like a, oh, uh, you know, we ain't got to look at all that, man. Just just you know, do some push-ups or something. You know, <laughs> just chill. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. <laughs> but. <clears throat> Uh, one of the well, you know, you like, know, you know, you know, it's in, in, interesting when uh, you, you, you know when we ask questions, especially somebody, uh, you know, I would say a, a white person born here. But when we begin to ask them questions that has a solidified feel to it, then they give us the reaction like, uh, no, you know. That don't make any sense. Uh, no, I would look other ways. What I'm learning is this, is that sometimes we have something in us that tells us, and if, if we're prayerful or meditate, we we will get the answer in some form or fashion. Let's say like a bird will fly over and he's got the number seven written on his belly, you know, mm-hmm. through some kind of configuration in, 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 in his feathers something like that. And I think that we as, as as people of color have to stop looking towards the especially the American Europeans for the answers because we don't know which one of them to trust or which one will give us the right answer. Now if if we take the movie, uh has has everybody seen Twelve Year Slave? Oh yeah. Yeah? No, I haven't yep. seen it yet. Uh, okay, I, uh... I love what the director did because he gave us five different faces of what the European would is. The first face was you had the slave master who who didn't give a damn about us. He had whip us, kill us, work us. And secondly, you had a European who the guy thought he can trust to send the letter, but he couldn't trust. He right. told on him, but he had a real smiley face. He seemed convincing. He posed as a friend, but he snitched him out. Thirdly, you had another European who would tolerate you for a second, and when the heat escalates, then he would he would also snitch you out. Then you had another face of the European who resented you. That's the one who was a taskmaster and didn't like the fact that he had ideals that the slave had that he didn't have. 
And then you have right. the character of Brad Pitt, who was from Canada, who wasn't down with slavery, had a whole different mindset, and he was like, man, you know, I help you with the letters. So that's what I love about that director. He showed us different faces of the snake. Right, I got you. Definitely, definitely. Um, we're going to bring on area code 347. 347, um, we're going to you on two. And we're going to go also to the questions of 803, and then we're going to go to 347. Y'all can continue on and um, asking the questions or building on the discussion. Yeah, yeah, how you doing? I'm, I'm back again. I got I got a little um, question for the brother uh, that just um, gave us a rendition of that movie, 12 Years a Slave. I want to ask him, um, you realize we're not people of color? No, right. You know, uh, we, we got to we gotta fix our terminology. I mean, we got to exactly. really start changing right, the, right. our vocabulary. We got to start changing the way we talk. Exactly. We got to start realizing it and, and being witness to the fact of what, what we're trying to defend and trying to create. We got we to gotta wake up, you know. We got to start talking right. There you go. Yeah. There right. you go. These, these, these right. things got to be changing. We 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 claiming to be the the, the kings of this land, exactly. you know, from ancestors. We 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 can't be talking like we used to talk, you know. We got to start bringing it right. right. I mean, and, and, and no and more reason, fear. No more and, fear. Exactly. <laughs> that, but I understand what you're saying, and the reason why the brother telling you this, brother, because in the Black Law Dictionary, under color, it says that. Mm-hmm. It appeared to be something, something other than real. A semblance of what is real. Like it's other fake, than no. real. Meaning no. that you're calling yourself a fake person. Uh, people of color, you're saying that we are fake people. Yep. Color well, of all. You understand? Yeah, exactly. But I'm just trying to, you know, it ain't nothing coming at you like that. It's just about, you no, know, no, we no, got to no. start I, really I, bringing I did, that. I did, I, I, you, know, you know, brother, I, I thank you. I can receive the correction. But since you took it there, when, when when we wake up in the morning, we say good morning. Now, let me show you how the, the evil entity is so ingrained into our vocabulary. We say good morning. But the Bible refers to Lucifer as what? The morning star. Morning. Morning, morning star. starts at the sun in the morning. It's so what? What are we doing when we wake up? We well, Lucifer, Lucifer, Lucifer was Lucifer was the um was considered the morning star, but so was Jesus considered the morning star. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, exactly. so work on both positive and whatever they, well, however you want to look at it. But at well, the same well, time, well, well, Lucifer belonged to us. Lucifer exactly. was part of us and our agenda because exactly. this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to bring back the the, the light and the darkness. We're trying exactly. to show that we do have light in this darkness. And that's what Lucifer, he's the light bearer in the darkness. Inside, right, right. Can, all of us. Can, can, can I add on that? He said the light in the darkness. Um, of course, Lucifer going from Lucis to, uh, uh, I think your boy, um, what is his name? The, um, the producer with Luke Skywalker and Dark Vader. Mm-hmm. It's all the a war in the stars. You know, Luke Skywalker, Lucifer. Yeah, I hear you. It's a battle between the light forces and the forces of darkness. That's what mm-hmm. you're referring to. It's an allegory. Uh, 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 the morning star actually is Venus. Uh, uh, the planet Venus. That's the morning star. That's the Lucifer. So Lucifer meaning light bearer. That's all Lucifer mm-hmm. means. Light bearer. Mm-hmm. It has nothing to do with We're trying to panic. get the real meanings. The real exactly. meanings of these words and bringing them out to, to start making them a, a local type understanding. Right, and uh, they, you know, the, uh, the Europeans demonized Lucifer. Um, the Statue of Liberty representing Venus with the um, that uh, that Tina green is like a, a greenish color, but that's only the oxidization of copper. You know, from what I understand, a, that wasn't even the original face. They switched the face right. up. Yeah, exactly. From, from the original was, face. Originally copper too, you know the uh, oxygen oxidizes that that copper turns it green. Look at a penny that been in the ocean for a while, it turned green. So, but we was green too. We was green back then. 
We was green way back when, too. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, like Osiris. No. Yeah, just, I, I, I'm, I'm hoping people start. I'm hoping people will start to um, start talking. You know, bringing this in a more. You know, we got to start talking right. We right. got to start changing, re- redefining, and going back to the original understanding of what these these terminologies really meant. Exactly. Now, 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 this information that we're talking about, Lucifer. Uh, the word Lucifer means uh, light bearer. Uh, light, bear the light. light bearer. Now, bear light. I, I think, I think, I think, I think that Isaiah chapter fourteen gives gives more of a detailed, well, I wouldn't say detailed, but semi-detailed description of Lucifer. Now, the information that this brother has says that Lucifer is force, but when I look at the role of Lucifer. He's always been in opposition to the righteous people in a biblical perspective from the Bible. Yeah, but who wrote that Bible? Well, who wrote well, the attendance? We, we wrote it. But we, as time went on, the words and the literature got trans- slightly re- changed. But, but, but it is a Hebrew history, a Hebrew history book. It's not a European Egypt, history book. Egypt. That's an Egyptian, right? Right. right. The Hebrew, the original Hebrews was Egyptian, right? Uh, well, you know, man, that, that, okay, when, when, you, when you look All at All the information place, came from Egypt, right? All the information came from Egypt, right? I, I wouldn't necessarily say Egypt because that's not a... The real name of Egypt is called Mithraim. Doctor Doctor Aline, could you um try to fit in there and, and try to read? I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to get this right too, because I'm I'm sure from what I understand that all that Hebrew understanding came from Egypt. Oh, you you, you with the majority of the information. Well, part well, part, well, part of the twelve tribes are Egyptian, because if you look at Joseph, who 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 is part of the twelve tribes, his sons, which is from an Egyptian wife. Uh, Manasseh and Ephraim are part Egyptian. Now, I, I, I can't go into details, but Egypt, Nubia, Kush, so those are all pretty pretty much the same thing. And no, but these folks, these folks wasn't like, even real folks, right? It's just no, the, they these real. are all allegory. Yeah, allegory. That's, that's a, yeah, that's what I was the underpinning of the whole story. I was I was waiting for somebody to say the allegory. You know, these things are which are allegory. Right, right. I just want to make sure we're on the same right. Based, based off of cos- cosmology. That's what right, uh, all based it off of. I'll be mixing it up all day at work in China. These people, you know, I got a young lady I work with, man. She's talking about Jesus and, and this and that. Don't try to put, you know, information together. I'm trying to. We're trying to build something, but you know, it'll fall apart because it's, it's, it's a big old trap. You know. Well, he, his, his, his name was that's Jesus. A, that's 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 what the year Europeans gave us, Jesus. But if you want to go back, his his, his real name was Imani New. You know, Emmanuel. So he yeah. wasn't a real person. He wasn't a real person. He wasn't a real person. Well, this wasn't away. biologically. This wasn't biologically like, happening. It wasn't. It wasn't a part of real, you know, material. Well, well, it exists within your biology, biology no, no, which, which means no, the, God, the, right. The, the word Christ consciousness. Well, yeah. Translated in Hebrew means God within us, or God is with us. So what you talking um, about? The Christ consciousness. Which right, is all right. within That's, us. That goes back to Luke. Right. That goes back to Luke seventeen twenty one, where it speaks about. Look here nor there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. That's but true. when you go to First Corinthians three sixteen, do you not know that your body is the temple of God? Right, so right. all these things show that you know this principle, which that we call in Jesus Christ or Holy Spirit or the Spirit of God or God, all exists within us, and exactly. they're nothing more than um, higher aspects of when the Kundalini comes up um, through um, our chakras. And when you're talking about that principle of light, of the light bearer, that's really talking about the Kundalini, Uriel. Um, Uriel mm-hmm. is the Hebrew name for the Latin name in which that we refer to as um, Lucifer. 
That's the oh, Kundalini, wow. actually. Mm-hmm. That's the Kundalini. So, mm-hmm. um, in order to resurrect, actually what you're doing is that from the base chakra level, but it raises up through the chakra system back to the crown, it becomes Christ. So, you're mm-hmm. talking about polarity or duality, actually, or the law of correspondence, which is one of the seven principles of Tahuti. Right. 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 You know, Dr. Alim, I got like a quick question. Uh, if you can run down one thing for me, bro. That that the story about mm-hmm. Yonder bro. I mean, I heard Bobby drop some magical information right. on bro. that, and I'd like to hear your right. rendition on it. Right. Ex- externally, the bro says our son, our son, uh, was made by the implosion of Sirius B millions of years ago, millions of years ago. All right. About I think they said about 5 billion years ago. Um, so the energy in which that was released from the implosion of Sirius B became our sun. And then as our sun was acting while within the solar system, it cast off solar plasmic energy in which that formed the planets as we now know them on the different levels of consciousness. For example, you have the Earth, which is the third dimension, um, Venus, which is the fourth dimension, Jupiter, which is the fifth dimension, and so forth and so on. So... Um, the sun is what produced these particular bodies. So hence, in particular, what they call the seven bodies. This becomes the seven Elohims later on uh, within the mythology and shows how um, our bodies correlate to the solar system. And we also have the seven chakras of the seven Elohims within us, which as above, so as within, so without. So now we have the seven Elohims, which is our chakra system, the root mm-hmm. chakra, which is the base chakra, the navel chakra, the solar plexus, the heart chakra, the throat chakra, the third eye chakra, and the crown chakra. So those seven become the seven churches in the book of Revelation, the seven candles, the seven flames, the seven thunders, the seven, all of those sevens, which is about 24 of them mentioned within the book of Revelation, is talking about those seven chakras. And the number 24 is relevant because you have 12 pair of cranial nerves that sit around the pineal gland, which comes up to the number 24. 12 times 2 is 24. So hence, the 24 elders sat around the throne of God and worshiped God all day and all night, saying hallelujah and amen. And that is talking about the soul being embedded inside of the pineal gland, which is God itself. That is the God within you. All right, that is your Lord and personal Savior. He's not a white man coming out the sky at any given time from 2,000 right. years ago. Um, this is a resurrection in which that happens within you based on your consciousness and you moving up through those seven stages of consciousness. So that's really what it is. So we could be sitting on at this consciousness and not even know it. Right, exactly. Well, I mean, yeah, it's just by building knowledge. I mean, it just becoming natural. You just feeling, you know, I mean, you know the understanding, but you don't even right. feel this energy, but you know there's something stronger in you because you know something right. moves. You know this. Yeah, we, we can, exactly. Incredible. Exactly. 